Hi, Floss Tube. I'm Annie, and I am the Proper Stitcher, and welcome to episode number 81. If this is your first time joining me, I'm so glad you stopped by today. This is a channel where I like to talk about cross-stitch and quilting and hopefully give you inspiration to fully finish your projects. And if you're returning, thank you so much for your continued support, all of your wonderful comments and emails. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. So it has been a while since my last video. The last time I recorded was December 22nd. So we have gone through Christmas, a couple of birthdays in my house, New Year's Eve, a couple of trips. So here we are. I believe today is, what is today's date? Oh, it's January 12th. So it's been longer than what I wanted and expected to be away, but I am so glad to be back today. So um, I have a lot of things to go over with you today. So grab a pen and paper, grab your favorite beverage. I have information about um, my whips, information about the New Year's Eve 12 by 12, um, an upcoming retreat that I am co-hosting, a cross-stitch retreat, and just all kinds of information. So grab a pen and paper, um, make sure you take good notes and grab your stitching if you wanna stitch while you watch this video. Um, not sure how long it's going to be, but it, it has the potential to be about an hour. So grab your pen and paper and stitching and let's get started. So I wanna go over some life updates with you because a lot's been going on in my house. Um, as you know, Gray is home from college and for winter break she goes home tomorrow she goes back up to school tomorrow so I'm a little sad about that I've enjoyed having her home we've enjoyed seeing her she has just um, grown and matured and just she's just been a joy having home having her home we've been watching movies and going shopping and um, baking cookies and all kinds of fun things and just letting her relax and take a good break. So it's been really nice having her home for about a month now. She got home on December 11th, so she's been home almost a month. Um, but I think she's ready to get back into a routine. She's ready to get back into a schedule. Um, she misses her friends. And so I'm just so glad that she loves her college life and that she has connected with so many people in, in such a short amount of time that she's excited to get back up there. So she leaves tomorrow. It's going to be really hard to say goodbye. Um, I've also been informed that we're taking down Christmas decorations tomorrow and Saturday. So we're ripping that band-aid off. So I'm going to be just out of sorts between Gray going back and taking away Christmas. It's going to be hard, but I've already changed my bookshelves. I am now in Valentine's mode. I don't have a lot of winter stitching or decorations, so I um, I put up Valentine's Day, and I did not take the time to do a video of my bookshelves. Maybe I'll do that next week um, so you can see some details of what is on my bookshelves this year. Um, this video is probably going to be too long for me to add that, and we'll just we'll just save that for next time. So so anyway, so Gray leaves tomorrow. Um, Tristan and Gray both were sick over the break. Um, Tristan was sick um, around the time that I last recorded. He had pneumonia, um, missed the last week of school, missed all of his midterms. He started back to school on Monday, had five midterms to make up in three days. So he had a a pretty stressful start to this week. Um, but he's glad that it's over and we've got a long break this, a long weekend this weekend. So he's looking forward to just, um, relaxing this weekend. Um, Gray got sick again after Christmas, between Christmas and New Year's, um, just a horrible fever up to 103. I had to take her to an urgent care clinic. We couldn't get her fever to come down. It kept inching up to 104, um, negative for everything, but, um, they went ahead and just treated it like she had strep just in case it was that but she's much better now we're hoping that she has it all out of her system and she can go into this next semester healthy and ready to conquer all of those things so let's see what else so had a great christmas um my sister-in-law was here that was during all of that really cold weather that the whole country was experiencing our heat went out on christmas eve um, our heat on the first floor went out so we had to use space heaters we um, used the gas fireplace fortunately we had heat upstairs so we were able to 
kind of stay comfortable, but we definitely had to bundle up if we were downstairs. So that made things a little bit interesting. Um, but it was still, it was still, um, we were fortunate. Our neighbor's uh, pipes froze. So we didn't have that problem. We at least had water and we had um, some uh, heat in some of the house. So that was, that was interesting. Um, Matt surprised me with a trip to Biltmore um, after Christmas. So we went for one night and got to see all the Christmas decorations, which is one of my favorite things to do. We did a candlelight tour up there. So it was a super quick trip. Um, we left late on a Thursday and came home on a Friday afternoon. So, but that was nice too have a little change of scenery and um, see some more Christmas. And then we took the children to Charleston, South Carolina for Tristan's birthday. Tristan turned 17 um, early January, first week of January. And we decided to go somewhere um, just, just to change things up a bit. So we took them to Charleston for three nights and that was a lot of fun. We enjoyed, Char Charleston is only about six hours away. So we um, were able to eat some really good food and do some shopping and we went fishing one day. That's what Tristan wanted to do on his birthday. And it rained really hard one day, fortunately not the day that we went fishing. So it was just a really good trip and it was nice to get away. And um, so since we've been back, we've just been getting Gray ready to go back up to school. We've been getting all the things she needs for school, um, getting her packed. So she leaves tomorrow morning bright and early. Um, so I think that's all of my, my life updates for you. I try to cram it all in as fast as I could so I wouldn't jibber jabber. But, um, but it's been a really, really good break. I wanted to soak up as much time with her as I could. Um, and with them being sick, I just really felt like that needed to be my focus. So I am back now and I have a lot of exciting things to share with you. Um, one of the things that I, um, before I get started into all of the information about retreats and things like that, um, every year, and I know y'all have heard of this every year, um, people come up with the word of the year, right? Your word that you want to follow through that year. And last year, my word was peace. Um, I really wanted to take time and reflect and um, just have a peaceful mindset and just have that sense of calm. And I feel like I, I, I did that most of the time. Um, this year, my word of the year is going to be courage. Um, I feel like that there are a lot of things that I have wanted to do in my personal life, my professional life, some new adventures that I've wanted to take. And I just never felt like I had the courage to do it. For whatever reason, I always have a little voice in the back of my head telling me um, no, or now's not the time, or maybe later. And so I just feel like this year, going forward, I am going to focus on courage. And um, I just think it's great to have, you know, rather than having a New Year's resolution, having more of a word or a remembrance or a reminder of something that you want to do or some way to better yourself or to focus on. And so this year, my word is courage. So I encourage all of you to come up with words of the year and see um, how that works in your life and your day to day. So, but okay. So enough of all of that, grab your pen and paper. Here we go. We're going to go into some information um, that I want to share with you. One of the things that I'm going to start doing, and I'm going to take a sip of tea from my cup that says courage. And yes, I did plan that. That's not a coincidence. I've had this cup though. One of the things that I have always wanted to do is co-host retreats, cross-stitching retreats. I always take you all on my adventures when I go to cross-stitch stores and to cross-stitch retreats. And I always share with you photos and tell you detail information about um, what we did at certain retreats. And, you know, I've been to so many retreats. I have helped Kim with Stitch Etc. host a lot of retreats. And this year she's asked me to uh, take more of a leadership position with her and help her with her retreats. And so I said, yes. So our first retreat together officially is going to be uh, this summer. Uh, the dates are June 22nd through June 25th. And it is going to be with the guest designers are um, Priscilla and Chelsea with Stitching with the Housewives. The event is going to be a patriotic theme event. And we are super excited. Registration opens tomorrow, Friday the 13th 
at 1030 Central Time. So if you're not interested in retreat information, skip ahead about maybe five, 10 minutes and um, we can pick back up into the stitching. But I wanna go ahead and give all of that information now for those of you who are interested in registering for the retreat. So, and also with any retreat, it's good to know if you're comparing retreats and you're trying to figure out where you're going and what you wanna do or um, for the year, it, it's good to hear what's going on with all these other retreats. So, here we go. So let me go over, I posted on um, Kim's, on the Stitching and the Stitch Etc. Facebook page and on my Facebook page, um, a retreat information packet. It's kind of a brief overview of what to expect um, for the retreat before you um, register tomorrow morning um, at 1030. There will be room for 75 attendees and there will be a wait list if someone happens to cancel or if they don't um, respond to their registration or being accepted into the retreat. There will be a wait list. So um, it is going to be a lot of fun. Um, so let me give you the details. If the name of the event is Stars, Stripes, and Stitching. It is a patriotic Americana themed retreat. So I'm just gonna go through and read through some of the brief overview information of the retreat. Um, the, the cost of the retreat is going to be $425 and you get um, lots of things included in that. And I'm gonna go over all that with you now. Kim and Ashley with Stitch Etc. have already posted their video um, giving information about the retreat. If you wanna hop on over to their YouTube channel, I'll link it below um, and watch their video. You can also go to their Facebook page and my Facebook page to get a little bit more information. So the activities are going to be, and this is kind of all over the place, but I'm just gonna give you the overview. Stitching with the Housewives will be the designer. Um, there will be a vendor shop and market. So Stitch Etc. will bring her cross stitch store, everything except, um, or pretty much everything except the floss, um, her, her thread. Uh, it's just too much to travel with that. But if you do want to place an order ahead of time, she will make it, prepare an order for you and you can pick it up at the retreat for floss. But she will have linen, she'll have um, patterns, she'll have her boards. There will also be a vendor market. We always, with the retreats, we do games and raffles and um, door prizes. So we play lots of fun games. Um, we, and many of you have um, saw from the years past, I've posted video, uh, videos and photos of games that we played. Everything from left, right, center, to the saran wrap game, to um, just all kinds of games. And so bingo, um, just fun games, a trivia, that sort of thing. So we're going to do the same thing with some new games inter intertwined in there because, you know, we, we've done that for a few years and um, we like to mix it up a little bit. So we're gonna do that. The raffle, we will have a raffle um, where you can, we haven't decided what the raffle will be, but the raffle tickets will be sold and um, the proceeds or the, the winnings from the money collected from the raffle will go to the American um, Alzheimer's Association. Kim's mom and my mother-in-law both passed away this past year um, and with Alzheimer's, and we feel like that is a cause that is near and dear to both of us. So we will raise money for that cause. Um, in the years past, we've done things like Toys for Tots, and um, the in that that's always a wonderful um, organization too. So this year we're going to do the American Alzheimer's Association. Um, door prizes. Every, about every hour or so, maybe every other hour, we do door prizes. Um, lots of fun, fabulous door prizes. And it, you do not have to be in attendance to win, meaning if you are an attendee and you're out shopping or doing something, don't worry. You will still get your prize if you win. Um, but lots of fun things to, to expect from that. You get an awesome swag bag. Um, we do not skimp. We do not leave any stone unturned when it comes to filling those swag bags. Um, we get really creative. So you get a really fabulous swag bag. Um, you do get an exclusive kit um, for the retreat class. So you get an exclusive pattern designed um, by Priscilla with Stitching with the Housewives and everything you need to stitch that piece. So you'll get the you'll get the fabric, you'll get your choice of fabric. You can choose between 18 count or 28 count and you'll get the floss and you'll get the, the um, exclusive design um, for the piece. You'll stitch that ahead of time. Um, 
it's so you can have it to do during the um, finish during the class time. I'll get to that a little bit later. Um, so you will have a finishing class privately um, with a group uh, taught by Priscilla and Chelsea. So you'll learn how to finish your piece. There will be a small gift exchange that is optional, cross stitch exchange. 24 hour stitching lounge. So our cross stitch room where we all set up tables of um, round tables of eight will be open for 24 hours. So you can, if you're, if you're in a groove one night and you're stitching and you're not ready to go to bed and we're not going to kick you out. If you want to stay up and stitch, you can stay up and stitch. So that's when I get a lot of my stitching done is that is when I am away from home and it's late at night. So a lot of fun, a lot of fun things going on there. Okay. I mentioned the price is 425. And um, so you get the swag bag, you get um, your class kit, you get all kinds of fun games, ad um, activities, um, a private class with Priscilla and Chelsea, um, all kinds of wonderful things uh, coming up along the way. Um, okay, so 75 attendees, there will be a wait list for cancellations. I'm reading off the list. Um, so the attendees are responsible for their own hotel reservations. So um, what we have found in the past is people like to schedule their own um, hotels. They like to schedule their own time schedule. If you wanna come in early, stay late. If you wanna stay at a different hotel, that is all up to you. So we've reduced the price of the, um, the fee so that you can do that. If you have points at a Marriott or at a Hilton or um, whatever your points are, you can use those and you can, um, you can, um, get get access to that. There will be a code if you stay at the Hilton Garden Inn and you are on the list of attendees. Um, we will have a separate Facebook page and you will get an email when you are accepted or when you you know get notified that you have been um, that you are in the retreat. You will get a code so that you can call if you want to stay at the Hilton Garden Inn and you can use that code to get a room rate, a group room rate that way. So. Um, some other information, um, the airport in the area, Indianapolis, so Greenwood, Indiana is kind of a suburb of Indianapolis. There is an international airport in Indianapolis. It's about 20 minutes away from the hotel. A lot of people flew in and they took Ubers. Um, the hotel also has a list of taxi drivers if you want to make arrangements with a taxi cab, um, but there's so many Ubers as well, so easy to get to the hotel. Um, Saturday night, the last night of the evening, there will be a farewell dinner, um, kind of like a big party that is included in your 425 price. So we will have fun events that night, but we will all stay together and have dinner that night. Um, and I mentioned it's at the Hilton Garden Inn in Greenwood, Indiana. Great hotel. The staff is friendly. There is a restaurant there, so you can have breakfast or dinner there. They, um, conveniently located. Um, close to lots of uh, restaurants and um, cross-stitch stores, fabric stores, Hobby Lobbies, uh, Home Goods, TJ Maxx. There's a Kroger, Starbucks, Freddy's, all within walking distance. So great location, great location, and very safe and clean. Okay, so here's the schedule for the event, the weekend. So it begins on Thursday. Registration opens at 2 o'clock. Um, so you can come set up your stitching spot. Um, meet and greet with Priscilla and Chelsea is from four to five. Um, from five until seven o'clock that evening, dinner is on your own. So we decided this year that um, the only meal that we will provide with your retreat fee is Saturday night's dinner. And what, the reason we did that is we found that a lot of people really want the flexibility of eating when they want to eat. You know, you may want to sleep late or you may want to go to breakfast somewhere. Or you may want to have a hot breakfast instead of the continental breakfast that we provided. You know, there's a, the restaurant has breakfast hotel, um, breakfast in the restaurant. So you can have omelets and pancakes and um, all kinds of yummy breakfast. Or you can just do the continental type. They call it continental plus. So really nice breakfast. But what we found is a lot of people were not eating the breakfast that we had, that you had paid for with your retreat. <coughs> excuse me so <clears throat> we decided same with dinner a lot of you were out shopping and you didn't want to come back to eat dinner that you had paid for so we decided to give you that flexibility have breakfast lunch and dinner on your own and then that way you can um have what you want when you want it <coughs> excuse me 
So back to Thursday night. So at seven o'clock, that is when we will pass out the swag bags and the um, games for the evening. When you register, you'll get like a name badge. Um, you will get um, probably another little gift. You know, lots of gifts will always be given at this retreat. This past retreat we had, it was Christmas in July and every morning it was like Christmas. You had a little present waiting for you on your, on your in your spot. So lots of fun things. Um, so the rest of the evening on Thursday night is open stitching, 24 hour stitching lounge. Friday, Friday is a free day. What we have found is it's fun to have a flexibility in your schedule to go shopping. Um, especially if you're in an area with four, I think there's four uh, cross stitch stores and fabric stores within a driving out within an hour to an hour and a half driving distance. You can drive to Cincinnati to go to Keepsakes. It's about an hour and a half, easy drive, straight interstate all the way. Um, there are other, there's Persnickety Stitches in the, in the Indianapolis area. Um, I think there's one called um, Always in Stitches. Um, Fancy, I think Fancy Works. I had the list last year. I can't remember, but there are several cross stitch stores and a fantastic quilt fabric store within 10 minutes of the, of the hotel. Um, and like I said, there's a mall, there's um, craft stores, there's Michaels, all those things. So Friday is a free day. The um, stitching lounge is always open. So if you want to stay and stitch and not go shop, you can do that too. Um, but the stitching room is always open. And then on Friday, activities are that night at 7 o'clock where you have games and open stitching. More games, more gifts, more all those things, but open stitching on Friday night. Um, and, and throughout the day on Thursday and Friday and Saturday, we will be doing door prizes. And so we'll just announce door prizes. So lots of fun. We do a lot of door prizes. Okay, so Saturday breakfast again is on your own. 10 a.m. Uh, there will be two groups. So group A starts at 10 a.m. on Saturday. And that is your fin finishing class with Priscilla. We will provide everything you need to finish your class piece. So some people um, are still stitching their class piece on that Friday, the day before the class. So you have plenty of time to get your piece done. You will receive it in the mail about six weeks before. Um, and if you don't finish it, it's not a problem. You can still attend the class and then take everything home and finish it at home if you want. No rules, do what you want. But, um, so group A will have their finishing class with Priscilla. Um, and that is from 10 till about 12 or until you're finished. Um, usually it takes about an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, so 12 o'clock until two, you lunch on your own and then two o'clock class B. Um, so half of the, half of the group will go at 10. The other half will go at two. So that will be, um, plenty of time to get your class, your questions answered, all those things. Priscilla and Chelsea are wonderful with helping you learn how to fully finish a piece. So six o'clock that night is our farewell dinner and that is provided in your retreat fee. Um, great dinner. Um, they, the, the Hilton Garden Inn really has a great kitchen. They do a wonderful job um, with the meals that we have had in the past. And then that night at seven o'clock, we have a Smalls Gifts Exchange and that is a cross stitch Smalls Gift Exchange. And that is optional. We just ask that it be five by five or smaller, just the gift, just the stitched piece in a bag. Um, all that information will be provided once you are ex are registered and um, we'll have all that information on the page, the Facebook page. So the rest of that evening on Saturday night, it's open stitching. Um, and again, this schedule is subject to change, but it's pretty much that's the schedule it will be. There will be door prizes throughout the entire event, like I mentioned, um, and you do not need to be present. So if you are out shopping and we call your name, not a problem. So we'll find where you're sitting. We'll place your gift in that chair and you'll have it when you get back. Um, and again, the stitching lounge will be open for 24 hours. So here's a little bit of uh, additional information for you. So uh, the store hours will be, um, the, the hours will be determined. We haven't decided on those shop hours yet. We just want everybody who is a vendor to be able to enjoy the retreat too. So we'll have times, a couple of hours um, every day where you can go and shop within the market. Um, and like I mentioned, um, the guest designer is stitching with the housewives and Priscilla and Chelsea bring their entire trunk show. It is amazing. They line up oh, like, so there's one long wall and then 
the walls come out like this and she fills the whole thing with everything. Um, I think she's going to need a bigger car this year because she brings everything and her model models are perfect. They are beautiful. I mean, it's fun to see them finished. Um, on her videos and her photos. She takes beautiful photos, but to see them in real life is so impressive. She brings all of it. She'll also bring some, she'll bring her patterns to sell. You can buy a hard copy or you can buy a PDF version of it. So it's completely up to you, but they do it all for you right there. So she'll have her own trunk show. Um, so Priscilla's already busy at work designing an exclusive pattern. It will be patriotic in theme. Um, and you will get your um, kit to stitch it about six weeks prior to the um, event. Plenty of time to stitch it. If you don't finish it, it's okay. Last year, I was still stitching it right up until the day of the class. So it's okay. No judging. I promise. Um, we will be stitching at round tables of eight. Bring your own um, magnifier and light. But we'll have power towers on the tables. The um, you don't have to worry about extension cords. You don't have to worry about any of that. Um, the power tower, uh, you'll be able to plug in your light. You'll also have a USB um, outlet. So if you want to charge your phone, your tablets, all those things. Wonderful. Wonderful setup. And then again, the class, or excuse me, the smalls exchange. Donations will be taken, $5 to participate in the smalls exchange. It's optional. You do not have to do it, but everybody has so much fun. It is a lot of fun, and it's a great way to connect with your fellow stitchers at the retreat. Um, one big thing about this event and when you go to register, there will be no refunds. So if you want to go to this and you really, really, really want to go, double, triple check those dates and make sure there are just so many up, upfront costs and expenses involved in hosting retreats um, that this is the best and only way to protect the, um, the host of the retreats. Uh, it's just just the way it is. So just check your dates, make sure it's a, a time that you can attend. Um, June, the, the dates again are June, oh, hold on, I lost my screen. June the 25th through, there we go, June the 22nd through the 25th. So June the 22nd through the June the 25th. Okay, so last bit of information here. So um, in the area, lots of dining and grocery store options. Each room will have a refrigerator and microwave. So if you don't wanna leave the hotel to eat and you don't wanna eat in the restaurant in the hotel, not a problem. You can, uh, there's a Freddy's in the parking lot, there's a Starbucks, there's a, a Chipotle, there's Cheddar's, there's Kroger, not a problem. Um, okay, and Register guests will have access to a private Facebook group page. You will have, um, you will receive that link in the email when you get notified that you are in the retreat. And then you can follow um, information from there. So we can make sure everybody is um, informed. If you do not have a Facebook page and you do get accept or you do get uh, on the on the retreat list, or if you want to register and you do not have Facebook give us your email, let us know. We'll make sure you, you are informed at any time that we make a post that you get the same information. So if you want to register, registration opens Friday morning, tomorrow, January 13th at 1030 Central Time. If you do not have Facebook, I will link Stitch Etc's email below. You can email them and Ashley will send you the Google Doc. Very easy way to sign up. I think there's like five questions on there. They're all um, required um, answers so you have to answer every question to be um, to, to register or to enter and here are some important dates and things for you to keep in mind so here is how it works all of this information is also on um, Kim and Ashley's face uh, YouTube video that they uploaded this morning so January the 13th is when registration opens Payment is due one week after registration. So you will receive, the invoices will go out on January 17th, excuse me. January 17th, you will receive an email that you are in the retreat. You will have a link to a PayPal to pay your invoice. You have one week to pay. So that will be January 23rd. So the 17th, you'll get notified if you're in the retreat and you'll have a link to pay your invoice. 
the 23rd is when your invoice is due. If you do not pay by the 23rd, then we will go on January the 24th and we will then go to the wait list and go, you know, start from the top and work our way down. Um, I think that's it. Um, so yeah, I think that's all the information. It is going to be a fun event. I really enjoy retreats with Priscilla and Chelsea with Stitching with the Housewives. They are so much fun to be around. Um, Kim and I make a great team and Ashley and all of the, the volunteers that we had last year. It's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to be together and to be away from, from your usual chores and activities you have at home that distract you from stitching and being with each other. You make a lot of friends. We've had people that have attended that didn't know anyone. And so if you don't know anyone going, don't let that keep you from wanting to go. Um, lots of people I've seen make really fast friendships at these retreats. So don't let that be um, a deterrent for you. So if you have any questions, email, stitch, etc. You can also email me at thepropersticher at gmail.com. But if you have questions about registration and the Google Doc and all of those types of things, email, stitch, etc. Because Ashley is the one who sees those emails and she's the one handling that. So she'll be able to answer them very quickly. So I hope that makes sense. And let's go back to the regular proper stitcher information. <laughs> so let's talk about New Year's Eve 12 by 12. So I learned a lot about myself. So for those of you who remember, on New Year's Eve, Kia B um, and Pam and Steph with Just Keep Stitching, they um, started this New Year's 12 by 12. And you could do team whips or you can do team new starts pretty much. So, or you can do both, and I did both. And what I learned about myself is I could not start at noon. I just had stuff here at home that was keeping me from starting, whether it was going to the grocery store or um, somebody needed to let the dogs outside or whatever the case may be. I really didn't get started till two. So I was already two hours behind. So I kind of split it up over New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, which was fine. I made the rules my own. It was fine. So, but what I learned is, and what I also realized is it wasn't one hour stitching on one thing. I think the idea really was to just get started on something, um, whether you could work on it for 30 minutes and then, you know, get up and walk around, do whatever. But what I learned is one hour is really not a long time to start something because I was looking at my progress on some of these and I was like, I didn't, it looks like I didn't get anything done. So it was really funny to see that, um, very interesting and eye opening, but it was a lot of fun to pick some patterns, to work on them throughout the day. And I did, I worked, I stitched all the way up until midnight, but I got a late start and I didn't get to stitch on some things as long as I wanted to, but we did have food already prepped. Um, I didn't have to do a big dinner. We all kind of had like little snacks and appetizers. Um, so that was fun, but it was not, I don't know if I'll do it again. Um, maybe I'll do a different version of it or be a little bit more prepared, but I do have everything to show you that I worked on. I did not get to two, um, items, not because I started two hours late, just because really like I've also found that I was stitching on one item and I realized I really want to keep stitching this. And so I kind of went over the hour on some things, which was probably breaking the rules too. But again, I didn't, I, I feel like we could just do what we wanted. So let's look at what I worked on. And uh, some of these things I've been working on since then, since the, um, since, since New Year's Eve. So here we go. And some of these I really have wanted to start for a long time. Okay, so the first piece, and these are not in order, but the first piece I'm going to share with you, this is not the order I did them in. I don't even remember what I did. Maybe next time I'll make a list, um, like a schedule. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so one item I worked on is, and I started two this, this time, I started two Hands Across the Sea samplers. The first one was Harriet Goddard, and I have liked this, loved this pattern for a long time. And I got this kitted up on one of my trips to Cross Stitch and Crafts in uh, Johnson City, Tennessee. And I and I really think that this is gonna be one of my focal point, focal pieces coming up 
um, over the next few months. But here's my progress, or here is my start. I am stitching this on um, 37 count Russian tea cake by Legacy Linen. And here's, the, it's just a good cream piece. It feels nice, it has a good weight to it. I love the way my stitches show up on it. I love this red. The alphabet is gonna be so much fun. Um, just, it's just a beautiful pattern. Let me see if I can get that to focus. So I am using, so what you do, it, one of the options you can do with the hands across the sea patterns, you can go to hoop and frame and kit the whole project. So you can select whichever hands across the sea pattern you want and, um, you can do it that way. I just happened to kit mine up at a Johnson City Cross Stitch and Crafts. And I am using all of the called for silk floss. So I have them all in my little bags. And this is the first time I have used this floss or this silk. Um, I don't even know what this is. It's, I, I, I'm gonna have to have someone tell me what this is. But these are wonderful little um, floss um, silk threads. Beautiful, beautiful colors. Great quality. It doesn't get stuck on my fingertips because, you know, I've talked about before where some silk floss, when you have dry hands like, like I do, um, it can get stuck and caught on it. This does not. So this was so much fun. I can see that this is going to be one of my favorites. Um, just a lot of fun. So Harriet Goddard, 1817, Hands Across the Sea. And here's my little start. A lot of fun. And... Um, so I worked on that one and then let's see, I brought out my Scarlet House floral motif sampler. This is one that I really want to finish this year, but this is the Scarlet House Hands Across the Sea Scarlet House floral motif sampler. And here is my progress. I am using all the called for gentle arts floss. But here's my progress. I am stitching this on 40 count mallow. And what I worked on that that night or that New Year's Eve, I worked on a little bit of the border for, for an hour. I worked on the border here and this flower. So that was my progress. This is just so much fun. I love the way that this border is just so simple because you don't want to take away from all of the the floral motifs, but this is this is one of my favorite stitches too. I think all my stitches are my favorite, but this was fun to work on. It's fun to bring things out. It's kind of like, oh hey, old friend, I haven't seen you in a while. So that was that's fun. That was that I will say was one of my favorite things about dividing up with new starts and um, existing starts because I'd forgotten about some of my pieces. So. Another new start that I had, this one is, this one I'm stitching for a friend. This is Stacy Nash Deck the Coop Pin Keep. And I got this kitted up at the Country Sampler when I went there last month. Deck the Coop Pin Keep. I will be stitching this twice because I want it for myself too. I did not get very far because this is one that I really only did for one hour, but here's my little start. Just that little border. So you can't even see it in the photo, but I started just the little border. Um, I was out of some colors. I was out of charcoal in Weeks Dye Works. This came as a kit and the kit was uh, missing that floss. So Kim um, at Stitch Etc. sent it to me. So that was great because I really needed that. So that is um, Deck the Coop. And this one is with all um, Weeks Dye Works. And the flaw of the fabric that is in this kit, I don't think it says. It is 40 count, but I don't see the, the color. They didn't tell me what color. So I'll call up there and see what color it is. Okay, another one that I've been working on is Plum Street Samplers, This Joyous Season. And this is beautiful. This is really a lot of fun to stitch. That house is no joke. Um, I did uh, change the color of the house um, from cayenne to Merlot. Um, I kept all the other red 
cayenne, but I changed the house to Merlot. My friend Dawn Brinker, excuse me, Dawn Eck did that and um, I copied her. So, but here is my little bitty progress. Um, I started this back in July, July 25th with Celeste, with Celeste Creates. And um, I worked on, on New Year's Eve, I worked on some of my bricks. But this is really a lot of fun. Um, I am stitching this on 40 count uh, navy, vintage navy bean, and which is a great color. It's kind of a nice gray color. Um, and I'm using all the called for floss on that. So it is a blend of Weeks and DMC. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. I really do like that. And then I pulled out an old friend, another old friend. This one is, um, it needs some, it needs some attention this year, but this is Quaker Christmas by Bygone Stitches. I started this as a stitch along with Artie, the vintage stitcher, and a lot of people have joined in. I've met a lot of people along the way who are joining us. Some people have finished, um, not me, but I did get some stitching done and I do have threads everywhere. I've got to clean up a little bit. So this is what I worked on on Christmas Eve, or New Year's Eve. I did the, this here, this motif and the red, Joy. So I am stitching this. I got this kitted up on a trip when I was in Williamsburg a long time ago um, at a store that is not open any longer, House Trio. They are now online or on Facebook. But I got it kitted up there, and this is a 40 count cream Edinburgh, I think. And I'm using the called for Classic Color Works and um, just Classic Color Works, just two colors, Balsam Fur and I think Cupid is the red. A lot of fun. Um, some people are really impressive where they'll stitch one page. I'm gonna stitch this one page and then move to the ne next page. I'm all over the place. I'll go from page two to page four because I, the way my brain works is I want to make sure that my borders line up. So if I make some progress over here, I want to make sure that I keep that border going. And so that's what I do. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully I'll get some more progress done on this. I'm really looking forward to our long weekend this weekend where um, not that I want Gray to be gone, but I know that, um, I don't have, to, I'm not like soaking up every minute with her and Tristan will be busy doing things with his friends. And so I'll have some stitching time plus taking down Christmas, which I'm not happy about. I'm one of those that I could leave Christmas up all the time, but then I like it when it comes down because everything just seems back in order and clean and fresh, but mm, I love having it up. I love having my lights up. Okay, my next start. I've been wanting to start this for a long time. When I mean a long time, I mean when it came out. This is Coming to America by With Thy Needle and Thread. This is an, an exclusive or a limited edition chart. I don't know if Brenda Gervais is going to re-release this. This was only out one time. It's not even on her website, but Coming to America but I have wanted to stitch this. This came out in 2020. And um, I've had it kitted for a long time, so I finally started it. This was supposed to be my Thanksgiving Day start, and that didn't happen. So, but I started on the border. I didn't have charcoal, but now I do. So charcoal is, is part of the border. So there, oh wait, I think it goes like this. So this is my border very teeny tiny start. And I am stitching this on 40 count um, vintage country mocha. And I'm using all of the called for floss, which is a blend of DMC, Weeks Dye Works, and Classic Color Works. Here they all are. Look at this, Chesapeake Bay. Isn't that a beautiful color? All of these, I still have some DMC I need to put on the floss drops. Um, but this is finally started and, um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm glad I went with, um, this fabric. When I was at Citrus Paradise in Las Vegas, Nevada last year or two years ago, um, I got to see someone's model. They had stitched it or they're, they're finished. They brought it to, to show me 
and it was stitched on 40 count and it was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So that's why I am stitching mine on 40 count. Kim is stitching hers, I believe on 28 count. I can't remember what she said, but Kim's stitching it too. So that is coming to America. This next one surprised me. I did not expect to kind of go away with this one or take off with it, but this is Plum Street Sampler's Soul Sister. And I started it on New Year's Eve and it's one that I really had a hard time putting down. It says, in friendship, let's join thine interest with mine, thine interest with mine. And I really started stitching it for me. I mean, cause I love the blue. I love the, the girls and the scissors and I'm like, oh, that's sweet. And Gray looked at it and she's like, why are you stitching a friendship sampler for yourself? And I was like, because I like it. So she was like, well, that's weird, mom. So I said, Kim, do you like this? Would you like it, me to stitch this as a model for your store? And she was like, sure. So this will be stitched for Kim's store, but here is my progress. And I got pretty far. So this is being stitched on 37 count Russian tea cake by Legacy Linens, which is one of my favorites, as I said a few minutes ago. But I went ahead and did the whole border because I, you know, this, I started the border on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, I picked it back up. And so I just really wanted to get that border done. And then once I got it done, everything else just went really fast. So the words, of course, always go fast. Um, this little motif is beautiful. I stitched one of the girls, her head I didn't realize is over one. Over one on 37 count. I don't know how I'm gonna do that. But 37 count over one I've never done. Anyway, so I'm gonna do the other girl, keep her headless, and then I'll probably stitch everything else and then go back and do the, the over one once I have um, floss around it or stitches around it to help me see the over one a little bit better. I have magnifying lamps, I have my Stella light, I have my lamp behind me, I have my, my Ot light, I have my readers, I have my mag, I mean, I can see it to do it, but it's just without anything around it, I'm worried that I'm going to have her head all wonky. So, okay, another one that I started is a, with thy needle and thread pattern. And this is the Tree of Life Sampler. And I love this one. I had it kitted up from Johnson City, Cross Stitch and Crafts, and it is a reproduction sampler. And this is the original that Brenda Gervais reproduced. It's so pretty. So this is my start. This I'm, I'm stitching it on 32 count Country Mocha. And let me see, this is the way it goes. So you can barely see it. It's kind of like a limey green. So that was my little start. You can tell I only worked on that for about 50 minutes, 45 minutes. Yes, I must have been a slow stitcher that day. That was not a lot of stitching. Maybe I didn't do it for a full hour. So I am stitching this. Oh, here are my glasses. Um, and I am using all the calls for floss, which is a blend of DMC, Weeks Dye Works, and Classic Color Works. Lots of beautiful colors. Very springy. Um, maybe this will look great on my shelves for the springtime. I don't know. Oh, here are my scissors. I'm finding all kinds of things in my hoop. Someone's asked me about these hoops. I love these hoops. I get them from Hoop and Frame. I have them in several different sizes. Um, I will link it below. Um, the, the only thing is, is you'll wanna get it. Well, some people do this and some don't, but I have my friend Kay put bias tape on the inside hoop so it doesn't leave a ring or snag your, your fabric. But some people say they don't have that problem. But I love these hoops. I have a square one, a circle one, and, a, and an oval shaped one. I also use um, Q snaps sometimes. So I kind of I kind of do all the have all the toys when it comes to that. I cannot stitch in hand. It hurts my hand um, too much, and I my tension's not right, and I feel like it slows me down. I think if I had learned to stitch in hand, it probably would be better or or be different for me. I wish I could stitch in hand because I know a lot of people who do, and they are fast. I'm not fast. Okay, we're getting close to the end here. All right, and then I pulled out Butterfly Cloche by Liz Matthews. And let me tell you, I love this one. I really, really do. It is just um, 
It takes a lot of time and a lot of focus. But I am stitching this on 40 count fog. And I worked on, in my hour, I worked on this part of the wing, filling that in. And I worked on this. This is like a branch that goes right here. So it doesn't look like a lot, but it was, I mean, it was a considerable amount. Um, so pretty. This I'm using all the MPI silks. I absolutely love it. I can't wait for it to be finished. It's just going to take me a while. I, those, each of those little butterfly wings, it's just a lot of color changes. A lot of color changes. But wow, when they're done, they're going to be beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So, yay. So excited to pull that out. And again, it's not that I... I put these aside because I don't like them anymore. It's like, you know, you know the drill. More patterns are coming out and new things are coming out and you want that. And I am not disciplined enough to finish what I'm working on before starting something else. If I see something I like, I am just, I'm either going to go ahead and get it before I forget about it or I'm going to start stitching it because I'm impatient and I really want to start it. Because in my mind, if I start it, it will get done one day. We'll see how that works. All right, two more of my 12 by 12. This one I wanted to do for a long time, really long time. It's another Hands Across the Sea. So I'm working on two Hands Across the Seas right now. This was a PDF download. So you can go to Hands Across the Seas website, download this pattern, and then you can either use the DMC um, colors, start it right away, or you can go to Hoop and Frame and you can have it kitted up. And I went to Hoop and Frame and had it kitted up. But here's the pattern. This is called Tom's Foolery. And I'm gonna just come in a little bit and let you see that. It is, there is a lot of wackadoo stuff going on in here, but I love it. Absolutely love it. I love all those colors. I love all, it's just so whimsical. So much fun. I love this. I would love to see the original. Um, I bet the original is just, just, just jaw dropping. It's so pretty. So I had it all kitted up. I'm using, um, I mean, look at all these colors. Here they all are. All of those colors. I need to get one of those fancy boxes like Brenda has with um, Brenda and the cereal starter. But here's my start. This, this was more than an hour of stitching. I can tell, but here it is here and I have the string still out. I'm filling in my little, this is the border the border is so much fun. This I am stitching on. Let me see what I got. I can't even remember. I need to start filling out my cards again. So this one I got, um, 38 count brewers malt, 38 count. And it's 25 spools of a very um, floss. Oh, but the colors are going to be so much fun. So this is a pretty good size. I mean, this is my, my fabric. It is a fat eighth of fabric. So I am excited about Tom's foolery. It is just, um, the colors are so fun and cheerful. Oh, I lied. I have, actually, I have two two patterns that I did not work on for the 12 by 12, but I've worked on since I saw you last. So, um, that's all of my 12 by 12. The next two are patterns that I've pulled back out to work on. This one I pulled out to work on on the car trip to Charleston. Um, this is JBW alphabet hearts and this I'm wanting to have done by Valentine's day. Um, this is one of her long pieces. Let me show you this. So she has one for patriotic, for fall, for Christmas. This one will be for Valentine's Day. Alphabet hearts. Absolutely love it. But I started this last year and put it down because I didn't have it finished by Valentine's Day. I might be able to get this one done by Valentine's Day. So in the car ride, I worked on this right here but here it is this is 
being stitched on 32 count fabric flare Parisian stripe. You can get this stripe, I believe in pink or light blue, and I am using the light tan. So pretty, which is what she used in the model. But this is JBW, you know I love JBW, but this is so much fun. So when I get this A done, I have the A and the B for this half, and this letter, I can't tell what that is. I think that's H-I-J-K. I don't know what that is. I think that's a J. I can't tell. And then that's the J. So I have that half. And then that half will be done. And then I'll come on over here. And I just have from these little three hearts here. And I'll have it done. So I might be able to have this done soon. But it is so much fun. I love all these colors. I did change the colors only because when I started this last year, I was getting it ready to go on a trip. One of the school trips that we were taking Gray on. And I wanted to start it right away and I pulled from my stash. So when I finish this, I'll let you know what colors, but I would just go with what Judy recommends on the pattern um, because I my colors just aren't showing up like hers. But it is, you have a choice of DMC. Um, there it uses Classic Color Works, Weak Style Works, and DMC. So lots of fun. So I pulled that out to work on and it was a lot of fun and I just forgot about it. My other one that I've pulled out because I really wanna have it done by spring is Spring Frolic at Bunny Hill by With Thy Needle and Thread. I started this about two years ago and I forgot about it. So also the problem with having too many whips, but I am almost done. There is absolutely no reason why I cannot get this done. All I have to do is fill in the grass and stitch another bunny and do one, two, three, four. So there it is. That's all I have left to do is this half right here. Yep, I already stitched the flower. I just have to do the bunny, fill that in, one, two, three, four. And I am stitching this on 32 count vintage country mocha and I am using all the called for colors. These are a blend of, actually no, they're all classic color, nope, gentle arts. They are gentle arts and classic color works. So beautiful, beautiful colors. So much fun. And I love bunnies. So this one is fun. I hope to have it done soon. I mean, look at those little bees. These little teeny tiny bees are over one. So pretty. Those little ducks, little chicks, I mean, not ducks. So cute. So hopefully I will have this one done. I don't know how I will finish it. I don't know if I'm gonna do this in a round or I have a wooden egg. I don't know if I wanna do it on that. I need to think about it. I'm just glad I remembered I had it. Okay, so those are all of my whips that I've been working on since I saw you last. I did have one finish and I need to FFO this finish. But this one I finished on January, December 30th. So the day before New Year's Eve. But this was Over, Over the Fields We Go by JBW Designs. This was a stitch along that I co-hosted with Merritt Crawford and she had hers done right away and she's already finished it and it was, she got to use it throughout the whole, um, holiday season. She finished it into a nice big pillow. Beautiful. I am stuck. I don't know what I want to do. First I thought, oh, I'm going to do a pillow. Oh, I'm going to frame it. Oh, I'm going to make it into a drum. Now I'm just like, I'm just so glad I have it done. But this is my piece. I got this from a kit at Country Sampler and they still have them, I'm sure. But um, this was stitched on Fox and Rabbit flannel, fox and rabbit flannel, 40, 40 count, sorry. And I used Turkish red. So one strand of floss over two, excuse me, 36 count. But it's beautiful. Look at the variegation in the deer. And I love 
the alphabet, how it really doesn't look like alphabet. It looks just like little swirlies. So pretty, the trees. I really think that you could do so much with this. You could stitch this in any color combination. If you want it to be a winter piece, you can change it from a red to blue or green or black. So pretty. So let me show it to you again. But JBW, it was a new release this year, over or over the fields we go. I tell you, Judy, Judy Whitman, she just keeps cranking them out. She has so many fascinating patterns. I just love all of her patterns. So hopefully I'll get this finished soon because I really, I want to go into next year, next Christmas season and have it done so I can just pull it out. So yesterday I was cleaning out my sewing room. It just, it gets, it gets to a point where my space is a little small and before I know it, it is just a mess. So it's like enough, I gotta clean it up. In doing so, I found some finished um, items that I forgot that I, that I did. So, and they're Valentine items. So bonus, I was cleaning, I was doing my bookshelves, cleaning my other shelves and uh, moving boxes around and I was putting cards away. I got a lot of Christmas cards and I was putting them in my card box and these pieces were in my card box. They got put in the wrong box. So I wanna show these to you. This is Valentine and this is a PDF download on Etsy. The shop is Country Rustic Primitives and I love her, um, words her that she has Christmas ones and some Valentine I think she has some other ones too but the font she uses is beautiful I don't remember anything about this um I don't remember what floss it is it looks like DMC and judging by the thread count this looks like it is 36 count but this is so sweet so so sweet it's very simple. I think that took me maybe a day or two to stitch. Very quick. I've stitched her Christmas ones before for gifts. One says Noel, one says Mary, sleigh bells, um, Christmas, so many one, but they're PDF. Download it right away and you're good to go. This other one is a um, Blackbird design. I don't remember the name of it. It was like, it's an old one and you finish it into a round and put it up, make a little pin cushion out of it. So I will probably do that. And then this one is another, this is a freebie, can't remember, but I stitched it on Ada. This is an old one, I stitched it a long time ago. So sweet, I, I can't remember what who this is. This may be, I have to remember, it's either Threadwork Primitives or Primitive Hair, I think. If y'all know, let me know, but this was a freebie. I doubt, I remember it was a freebie. But anyway, so much fun. So much fun. So I found those. What a great, I mean, hey, if you're wanting to find, you know, kind of something, clean your sewing room, you'll be surprised. Okay, so those are all of my finishes, my whips. Um, and I do have some gifts to share with you. I got so many wonderful Christmas cards. Um, a lot of them I've already put away. Thank you all who sent them to me. I just loved every one of them. Um, I did not get around to doing Christmas cards this year. It was just one of those years where um, time got away from me. So, but thank you all who sent them to me. I really do love Christmas cards. Artie, the vintage stitcher. She is such a dear, sweet friend. Um, I got to meet her last year at the Stitching with the Housewives retreat, and hopefully I'll get to see her again this year. She is venturing out and doing a lot of a lot of new things. Go and check her channel out. She's doing some finishing, some professional finishing. She does long arm quilting. She's hosting some retreats. Um, she's just doing a lot of stuff. So go and check her channel out. But she made this beautiful pin cushion for me. And it is from a Ray Dunn, uh, excuse me, a Pioneer Woman, um, little, little dish, like a little dipping bowl. I love it. I love, I mean, look at how sweet that is. But it is a pin cushion. She made this wonderful pin cushion. And she made, she sent me one of these. And this is a, a like a starter kit if you're wanting to finish something. So you she she's already started it for you. And you just finish your, you just put your stitch piece on it. So Artie, thank you very much. That's very, very kind of you. 
And then I got a sweet card from my friend Judy Whitman. And she sent me a sweet, precious little gift um, that that is very special to me. And she sent me a beautiful, beautiful um, Christmas card. Um, funny story. It was sent to the wrong address. It was sent to my old address. And so my old, uh, we went to my uh, neighbor's, old neighbor's house for dinner um, during the, the break. And they said, we have something that was shipped to you. You want us to bring it to you? You want us to hold it for you? And I was like, well, I'll just get it when I come over because I thought it, it's probably, you know, everybody who knows me knows I move. They already have my address. Well, anyway, it happened to be from Judy and somehow she pulled my old email, uh, my old home address and sent it there. So I got that after Christmas. Um, I am, I got another beautiful card from um, Tiny House Stitcher. So pretty. She has a fantastic floss tube if you have not checked it out before. Um, but I love, love, love this card. But Angie is her name. And another sweet card from a viewer. And just lots of cards. I just I can't show them all to you, but those all came recently. And this adorable pattern came in. Um, she said it looked like me. Um, I just can't wait to stitch her. I am really getting excited about patriotic stitching. I have a stitch along I think I want to do. I want to share the pattern with you. Kind of figure out when we're going to start it. But like I need another stitch along. But I want more patriotic pieces. But anyway, this is just precious. Absolutely precious. I might change her dress. Maybe dark, uh, brighten it up a little bit, but really pretty. And then I got surprise Amanda Badger, who I met her at for two years ago at the stitching with the housewives retreat. And she has started a company called soulful creations. I am going to list it below. Um, last time, um, I showed you the portfolio that, uh, Carol with creative Carol sent me. I have it right here. So she sent this to me. It's kind of like a trapper keeper. Fabulous. I'm going to list that below too, but I kind of showed it very quickly, but so nice. But when I shared it with you, her shop was closed. So I'll list that below too. Thank you, Carol. But this one is from Amanda, Amanda Badger, and she has a website and I'll list it below too. And I'm so excited. She sent one to Kim, but she makes these beautiful portfolios, kind of like a planner kind of like an organizer, but she knows that we like Frida Kahlo. And so she embroidered Frida, an image of Frida. And then she, she selected fabrics. She has so many different kinds of fabrics um, that she uses, but this has pockets, it has zippers, has a place to keep pins, um, sewing needles, floss, you name it. I mean, it's kind of, I mean, there's so many different uses for this and look at that zipper. Oh my gosh. I just, my breath, it took my breath away. It was so pretty and so thoughtful. And Amanda, I love it. I hope I get to see you this summer at the um, retreat. I will link her um, website below if you want to go on and look at what she has. Um, but so well made. It's, it's just perfect. Um, cushion, just very, very organized. I mean, look at that in there. So much fun. Thank you, Amanda. I really do appreciate it. Oh, and here's her business card. I'm going to show you the business card, but I will list it below. She has an email and her website is soul with an E. Um, so S O U L E creations.com. But here is her I don't know if I can get that to focus, but I will make sure to link her email and her website below. So those are some gifts that I got. And then I ordered two patterns from Stitch Etc. So I had to get the new Plum Street Samplers. I've had this pattern before when it was an exclusive kit, but I think I used it as a giveaway and it was re-released and I'm like, ah, I really like that blue house. So I got this one. This is called My Heart's Welcome. And then the other one is the Christmas Mini Moon. And I love this house with that bunny. But you know what? With that bunny on it, I don't know. It has candy canes. I was going to say maybe it can be a spring, but it has candy canes. So pretty. Love it. So I got those two from Stitch Etc. 
And I think that is it for my haul and my gifts. Um, one thing that I want to do for July, for my patriotic displays and my summertime displays, I want to stitch this Artful Offerings pattern. This is um, Americana Sailboat Sampler. I just love this piece and I have for a long time. I have the linen, or I have linen that I will use, but I do not have the floss. So I'm gonna order the floss. So I'm thinking I'm going to start this one, um, maybe February 1st, first week of February. If you wanna join me, I am by no means am I calling this a stitch along because I never finish my stitch alongs. I, I just, I don't. But a start along, if you'd like to start, and if you wanna do this, and if you wanna give me inspiration to get this done, Let's do it together. But I love everything about this. I love Artful Offerings. So last year, if y'all remember, I did Pierre. I, well, we nicknamed him Pierre, but I did the, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the pattern, but he was the the little seagull with the, the hat. Um, he needs a little companion and piece. So I'm going to get, I am going to stitch Pierre a sailboat. Come on. Let's stitch Pierre's sailboat. So I'm gonna get the floss for this and I'm gonna get started. Um, the, it calls for 36 count linen, get what you want. Um, 15 by 15 is the size um, on 36 count, but it has, or the stitch count is 186 wide by 183 high. You can, they have it finished into a pillow which would be fantastic to see. Um, I mean, that's a nice size pillow, but it has a blend of gentle art thread and DMC, or you can convert everything into DMC. They have a DMC conversion. So I'm gonna get my floss together. I have in my stash a lot of different 36 count and 40 count and 32 count. So I'm going to just figure it out, but I think I want to start this February. I will talk more about it next week, but if you're interested, let's get the pattern. Let's get it going. Um, I figured that'll give me plenty of time to get it done in theory, but I really think Pierre needs a little sailboat. So this is Americana sailboat sampler. I've had it in my stash. I think I need to stitch it. I think I really do. So, um, I am going to be better this year about my planner. I have my Lori Holt, um, be in my bonnet, 2023 planner. Um, I've got a lot of things coming up, a lot of things I want to do. It's going to require me being organized and I'm really going to use all of this. I am also going to be better about using my book of days. Um, I kind of fell off a bandwagon on that one last year. So I'm going to start doing that. I've already started with January. Here's my January. And it's just something I want to do. I really, really want to use. I've got so many cute stickers. So I'm going to do all that. So with that being said, let me show you what my giveaways are for this week. And let's announce the, the winners from last time's giveaway. Um, last time I did not have giveaway. Uh, for I didn't say I was going to have a giveaway. I am going to choose 15. I chose 15 names to do a Zoom call with me. Um, I have not selected the date yet, but I have my winners. So I think what I'm going to do is announce the winners. That's all you all email me. And then I will bounce back and send you all three date options. And we will either hopefully all choose one date or I will choose a date that works best for everybody or we'll choose two dates and we can split the group up. But I chose 15 names. So, um, going forward. So let's listen. So if you would like to enter to win a giveaway, like my channel, excuse me, subscribe to my channel, like my video and answer the question or leave me a comment below. And, um, and then if I have numbered items, like several giveaways, use the corresponding number that you would like for me to enter your name to win. I use a random comment picker and then I announce my, my winners on the next video. Um, I am caught up on all my mailings. Everything has gone out. Um, I've had just all kinds of things going on over the last month that I got behind on my mailings, which happens. Um, but everything's sent, caught up. I got to catch up with my friend Terry at the post office. He um, knows I have a floss tube channel and he always sees me coming. I have my big bag with all my giveaways and um, it just gives me an opportunity to chat with him while he's entering everything in the system. Um, 
which is a lot of fun. The people behind me don't like it, but it's fun. Okay, here are the 15 names from last time, and then I'll have giveaways after this for next time. Okay, 15 names. The first one is Elsie, E-L-I-S-E-D-A. Second, Carol Omer, O-M-E-R. Third, Sally Deham, D-I-E-H-M, Diam, Sally Diam. Kathy Berry, Kathy Berry. Deborah Kaiser, Deborah Kaiser, Christine VH, Amanda Hayney, H A Y N I E, Beth Galeen, G I L E N E, Lisa Anderson, X Stitching Librarian, Debbie S I S K, Debbie and then S I S K. Kelly Tadlock, Janice Stewart, Angela Howard, and Mary Jo Sanchez. <clears throat> if I called your name, email me at thepropersticher at gmail.com, and then I will do, um, I'll respond, kind of get some, some dates together, and we will try to have this Zoom call with, before the end of the month. So I'm so excited to, to talk to each and every one of you. Okay, so this week I have some giveaways. And some of them are I received um, a couple weeks ago from the Fat Quarter Shop. And I want to share them with you. And then some of them are either from my stash or from previous packages sent to me from Fat Quarter Shop. Okay. Here we go. I didn't number these, sorry. Okay, the first one is going to be two items. So they sent me, and I'm gonna to read to you the description of these because I really think these are pretty awesome. One is called the Unstitcher, and it's this fabulous tool. It's kind of like a frogging tool. Um, it's, it says, fix all your stitching slip-ups with the Unstitcher by Lori Holt, be in my bonnet, with a tapestry needle and curved handle. So it's easier to pick it out um, with this and you're not pulling on your uh, stitches you don't want to pull out. You're pulling on just the stitches that you want to pull out. It has a nice little fine needle in there. So it is a beautiful shade of red. So it comes in this little package. And then a needle minder. This is called Chicken Club Enamel Needle, needle Minder. So we have these two items. That will be number one. Number two is a quilt pattern from the Fat Quarter Shop. This is called Swallowtail. And this is uh, an It's So Emma um, quilt pattern, number two. Number three is another quilt pattern, Desert Daybreak, It's So Emma. Number three, excuse me, number four, number four is from my friend Bonnie Woomer with the Nebby Needle. This is beautiful. She gave me some patterns a while back and I haven't gone through all of them yet. So this fabulous pattern, and I have this enamel bee needle minder from the Fat Quarter Shop that I'll put with it. So that's number four. Number five is from a viewer, Plum Street Samplers Mary Two. Number five. Number six is from Teresa Kogut, Gather. Number six. Number seven is Simply Half Yards by Fat Quarter Shop. It's a great quilting book. A fantastic quilting book. So that's number seven. Okay, and number eight, we have two of these. So I am going to read these to you because this is for quilters. Um, and I've not used these before. These are fantastic. It, it just is a great idea. Triangles on a color roll coated was washi tape. So these are great stickers that um, help you keep your rolls of fabric organized. So it says easily identify your triangles on a roll paper and keep it from unrolling. Save time in your sewing room with triangles on a roll coated washi tape. The circle-shaped washi tape pieces are printed with each triangle roll 
size to help you label and identify your triangle. So you have four eight and a half by 11 sheets. Each sheet has 20 stickers and it has um, half inch finished um, half square triangles, one inch, so it one and a quarter inch and so on. So these are great. So if you have a roll of fabric, you use these stickers and it tells you what's in that roll. So this will come with your dog ear clipper tool. And that is, it saves time by cutting the corners on your half triangle units with a dog ear clipper. So that will come with it and your foundation paper, 12 by 12 square blank foundation paper. So you can draw your own quilt blocks for paper piecing. Um, great, great booklet. It says 13 inch square paper is ideal for quilting blocks of 12 inches. So this is one set. So these two, so we'll have two winners for this one. I've lost track of what my numbers are now. So you probably kept it better. So let's see, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven. And then number eight is the last, the, the foundation paper, your triangle stickers, and your dog clippers. Uh, dog ear clippers. So that's number eight. So here's how it works. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and here's your question. So enter the number that you would like to be entered to win. And the question I'd like to know is, what is your word of your of the year? So mine is courage. Do you have one? If you don't, it's fine to say I don't have one and just tell me something else. But if you do, let me know. What is, what is your focus this year? So until next Thursday, I hope that you have a great week. If you are interested in registering for the Stitching with the Housewives Stars, Stripes, and Stitching um, Retreat, registration opens tomorrow morning at 1030 Central Time. And that registration form is on the Stitch Etc. Facebook page, or you can email them directly to get a link to that doc, Google Doc form. So until I see you next week, I hope you all have a great time stitching and just enjoy yourself. Thanks.